excuse me while I go vomit, which is a good thing for books. You know, you want it to emotionally distress you. This was supposed to be a humorous book, apparently. I would recommend this book to anyone. It's probably like my number one favorite novel now. Hello, my name is Michaela, and welcome to ranking the Marvel cast's favorite books. So first of all, just a disclaimer, I am not in contact, unfortunately, with any of the actors um, in the MCU, so I did not actually get their opinion on what their favorite book was. Um, it took a lot of scouring on the internet to try to find their favorite books. Some of them were easier, some were notoriously difficult. I just like want to make that disclaimer because if you see somewhere else that their favorite book is something else, that's probably because like often they would even provide a list of recommendations and I just chose one of those because it was so subjective in trying to determine what their favorite book is. This has been so much fun though. Okay, also I'm having to split this up into two parts because this is taking so much longer than I thought it would. I have 18 on this one, there should be 18 on the next unless I happen to find some of the other actors' favorite books because also like I couldn't find the favorite books of some of them. Like they were just nowhere, they existed nowhere on the internet. So um, yeah, this is part one of the Marvel cast favorite books and I'm going to be tier ranking with five levels so that it can roughly coordinate to how I kind of rated them on Goodreads. I might change it slightly, I'm not entirely sure, depending on my mood in the moment. At the very top, we have The Pinnacle of Joy, which are books honestly worth rereading. And then next is Applaud Worthy, very good, excellent, maybe I wouldn't read it again, like once and done is fine. Number three is Epitome of Morally Grey, so you have your MCU characters that are morally grey and you also have your books that are morally grey, in that they have some good and some bad elements. Number four, A Massive Disappointment, maybe there is one element that kind of ruined the rest or I was expecting so much more out of it, but it had something that just knocked it down a level from what I was hoping it would be. And then number five, these are books that are an Avengers level threat to society. They are a menace and I I don't even know how I got through them. <laughs> They were awful, so <laughs> love all the actors, don't love all their book choices, <laughs> but here we go. Okay, number one is Huckleberry Finn. Oh, and I should mention that some of these books I read years ago. For example, I read Huckleberry Finn back in 10th grade in high school, so I obviously didn't reread it for this. Uh, I just like reread a summary of it to refresh what I think of it. It's only a few of the books though. Most of them I read within like the past few months. But anyway, Bradley Cooper, who he does the voice for Rocket Raccoon, he said that his favorite book is Huckleberry Finn. He said about it that he remembered reading it in school and it was one of the first books that made him realize he loved reading. Sorry Bradley, it is a book that made me realize not all books are worth reading. The river, everything about it, I found to be incredibly boring. I hated the pacing, I hated the writing style. I mean, it's the only Mark Twain book I've ever read, but it doesn't make me want to continue reading Mark Twain. I will say though that it's a classic, so it does have its elements that are worth talking about in class, so for that reason I'm putting it at it too. The second one is Where the Red Fern Grows, which is apparently Chris Pratt's favorite book. He says it's his favorite childhood book though, so maybe he liked it when he was a kid. I don't know what his current favorite book is, but you know, we're dealing with it. So Where the Red Fern Grows, that was kind of traumatizing and it was really depressing. I really loved it when I was a kid. Uh, this was one of my favorites to read. Uh, I loved Old Dan and Little Anne. I thought it was just so much fun until the very end. So if you're looking for a book to cry at and a book that's easy to read, then this one might be for you, but I, I'm gonna put it at a four because it emotionally distressed me as a child, which is a good thing for books. You know, you want it to emotionally distress you. Number three, John Favreau, um, Happy Hogan. I love Happy. <laughs> Um, I hope he's in more stuff. But he said that The Hobbit was an important book to him. And here's the thing, okay, I love Lord of the Rings. I love The Hobbit. And this is gonna sound blasphemous because this is obviously a book video, but I prefer the movies over the books. Like, I'm sorry, Tolkien, your world that you create is fantastic, but the writing style itself can get so dry. I found it to just not be the most enjoyable thing to read as much as I love the world. So I'm just gonna put The Hobbit at a three because it is really fantastic. I mean, it has such an amazing influence and I love the saga. I love everything about Middle-earth. So I'm gonna put it at a three. Gwyneth Paltrow, um, she said one of her all-time favorite novels is Crime and Punishment. She said she really identified <laughs> with Raskolnikov. Am I pronouncing that right? But she says it's because he behaves amorally, but he has an incredible sense of right and wrong. Obviously, she couldn't identify with him as a killer, thank goodness, um, but she could understand what it means to know that something's wrong, but do it anyway, and that makes a lot more sense. And I agree with Gwyneth. Crime and Punishment is a stellar novel. I'm so glad I read it just because of the moral message in it and uh, the exploration of like what it means to believe you're above other people. So, um, this, it's gotta be a five. Crime and Punishment is a five. Ah, uh, Paul Bettany. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, this was not a good book. And the thing is, is everyone else seems to love it. I could not get past the lack of dialogue tags, the absence of any names at all. It bothered me. I know it's a stylistic choice, 
but I didn't like it personally as a reader. The intentional misuse of grammar, also stylistic, I found it to be annoying because it didn't really have anything to do with how the characters spoke. It was just an unnecessary lack of apostrophes. I really didn't like the writing style. That being said, it was a good dystopian. It had a lot of very poetic writing as well. So I'm gonna put it at a two. It's lucky it's getting a two though. I'm, I was this close to putting it at a one. Don Cheadle, the kite runner, he says he knows this novel was a book club darling, but he heard about it from a friend who is going to produce it as a film. There are moments in this book where he gasped scenes of brutality and surprise that just chilled him. That's what he said about it. And that's totally what I thought while reading this. It was a beautiful book. It was definitely very predictable. So I'm putting it at like the lower end of the tier five, but I feel like this is something that everyone needs to read. It's one of those more modern classics. Oh my gosh, we've got another five. I know this much is true by Wally Mark Ruffalo. Okay, I found out in retrospect that he apparently is starring in a TV adaptation of this book, so maybe that's why he said it's his favorite book. I do not trust that it's actually his favorite book now, but whatever, it's too late. I read it and it's a super long book, so I'm not going back on that. But um, I know this much is true by Wally Lamb. It's, it's like just a realistic fiction and it explores like these two twins and one of them is like schizophrenic and the other is trying to deal with the fact that his twin is schizophrenic. And it's so good. It goes back and forth between the present and the past really seamlessly and you feel like you get to explore their entire lives. I, I enjoyed every single chapter in this book. So tier five, 100%. Sebastian Stan, Still Life with the Woodpecker by Tom Robbins. This was supposed to be a humorous book, apparently. It was bizarre. It was so weird. I'm sorry, Sebastian. I do. <laughs> This is gonna go in the tier one. I I didn't like it. It felt like a string of incoherent thoughts that were written down like in the middle of the night when you're half asleep and you're not really sure what's real and what's not. It was like an acid trip of a book. There were a lot of really strange metaphors and anecdotes that just distracted from the story. I found it to be really, really weird. And that's why it's a one. It was too weird. Like I can deal with a weird book. This one's really weird. <laughs> Tom Hiddleston. Okay, he must be an intellectual because he said his favorite book was Anna Karenina. Mm, man, that was a long book. And I want to admit right here, maybe I'm I'm gonna put it at a tier three because I did enjoy parts of it. I didn't enjoy lots of other parts. It's a very morally gray book. To be honest, I don't think I'm smart enough to appreciate the book because I've heard lots of people say it's the best thing ever. Um, I'm assuming that just a lot of it went over my head even, and, and I took two quarters of Russian civilization. And like, it's still just hard because there's so much Russian society in this book. And I feel like you'd like have to grow up in that to really, really grasp and appreciate it. Or you'd have to be a scholar of Russian civilization. So that's why I'm putting it at a three because I think there are things that are definitely beautiful about this book that you should be able to appreciate. And I just wasn't able to appreciate all of those. And I acknowledge that, which is why I'm not putting it at a two or a one. Andrew Garfield. He said that he's been inspired by Mary Oliver. She's a poet. So I just selected one of her books, A Thousand Mornings. And it was a very, enjoyable quick read. The poems themselves often were very short to the extent that I thought they could have been longer. You know she talked about tides and everything and it was just like <laughs> there were some that just struck me as like very pretty, um, very florid language. I'm not intrinsically fond of poetry so maybe for that reason I it just didn't leave that much of an impression on me. I was a little bit underwhelmed so I'm just gonna put it at a tier three. Paul Rudd. Okay, this is not his favorite book. Apparently, like, during an SNL thing, it was just spotted on his bookshelf in the background because he was, like, joining virtually. Jude the Obscure. Uh, I really like this as far as Victorian literature goes. Victorian literature can be very difficult to get through, um, but we did this one in actually winter quarter in my class, and I loved our discussion about it. I loved the characters, and also it was very progressive for the time. Like, I felt like it was very daring and bold for Victorian literature, and that's why I liked it. So I'm gonna put it at a tier four. You know, it's not the kind of book that you'd want to sit down by the fire and read because it's not, you know, it's one you really get a study as you read, but it's so worth it if you can get through it. <laughs> Hence the four, level four. Vincent D'Onofrio, who is Kingpin, fabulous Kingpin. Uh, he's such a terrific actor. He said that The Stand is one of his favorite, or no, not one of his favorites. He called it the favorite in a tweet. I love The Stand. It was long, but it was very satisfying. It keeps you on your toes the whole time, and it's like thriller slash sci-fi dystopia kind of vibes. I mean, I always love Stephen King, so maybe that's why, but I'm definitely putting it at a tier four, and it's not a tier five only because because the book um, is basically set in the future when like almost everyone is dead and then like evil arises. Like that's a very basic premise of it. But I wish that it had lingered more on the after effects. So like what does society look like now that there's very few people left? And like, yes, they make their own little community in over in Colorado, I think, and start kind of reforming and rebuilding their society. But I felt like there should have been more shock waves coming from the fact that so many people are dead. Like, you know, the focus was on the evil that was growing in the West. And I would have liked to have seen more of how is society impacted by the fact that 
everyone is dead. Okay, Tom Holland, who plays Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Love No Way Home. That was one of my favorites. Probably the right along with everyone else who's watching this video. He said that growing up, Harry Potter was one of his favorite things ever. Just, I mean, based on the influence alone, and I was obsessed with Harry Potter when I was younger. So I'm gonna, I've gotta put it on the tier five, even though, you know, I haven't really, it doesn't really impact me anymore like it used to. I can't not, just considering the effect it had on me, and it's kind of the reason that I started reading. Yeah, tier five. Haley Atwell, she plays Peggy Carter, and she said her favorite was To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, this was also a book I read in sophomore year in high school. You know, I'm gonna put it as a tier four. I think that I loved the characters, um, Atticus and Scout in particular, and their relationship, and the way they interact with one another. I mean, the, the themes of the book are unforgettable, obviously. And the only reason I'm putting it at a tier four, not a tier five, is because, again, kind of the reason for why I made the tiers. Like, there are some books I just, I've read once and I wouldn't want to reread, and that's just one of them. Okay, we've got another Stephen King book coming up. Zoe Saldana, she plays Gamora, and her favorite book is Different Seasons, which is actually for novellas all in one book. So it includes like Shawshank Redemption, it's like so many classics. The Body, which has been remade into a movie called Stand By Me. Two others, I'm completely blanking on the names. One of them deals with this kid who visits this older guy and they just do a lot of manipulation and corruption with one another and that one was one of my favorites. Zoe says that he digs into human psychology and there's a lot of beauty and liberation in his stories. Her favorite was Shawshank. I've gotta, I've just gotta agree with her that this book is fantastic. I've gotta put it in the tier five. Um, again, Stephen King, like, you just can't go wrong with Stephen King. I love his writing style. Okay, we've got three more. Um, oh, excuse me while I go vomit. Sorry. Um, okay, Elizabeth Olsen, you're an amazing actor and I love your work and I'm really looking forward to seeing Multiverse of Badness. I still haven't seen it yet. Scarlet Witch is amazing, but uh, your book choice is like my least favorite book ever. The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. My mom and I actually read this together at the same time for kind of like a book club thing. We hated it. Elizabeth said that it's her favorite and that you feel manly reading it. The book felt like one long description of events that I don't care about reading, like bullfighting, and oh, we're traveling, oh, we're going to parties, and um, what was it? I have to check my Goodreads review. This book seriously challenged my belief that there's a reason the classics are so popular. I've honestly never read a more plotless book ever. It felt like a merry-go-round of drinking, bulls, bland fights. I say, darling, and Brett is just the most amazing woman ever. You know, and I even read the Spark Notes analysis to see if there's anything I was missing about the book that I should, you know, that maybe like I'm, maybe it's going over my head, maybe that's why I thought it was so terrible. It was just a terrible never read it. Never, never read this book. Like, if you want to save two hours of your life, don't read it. It was excruciating. So, um, tier one, if you couldn't tell by that. <laughs> that sorry. I'm so sorry, Elizabeth Olsen. I, this is nothing against you, only against the sun also rises. Okay, Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh my gosh, I was so obsessed with Sherlock, and I am still obsessed with it. I'm just really bitter that they never made a season five, but that is not the point right here. He said his favorite book, um, is one that changed his life, The Catcher in the Rye, and The Catcher in the Rye was not what I was expecting. I, I guess, like, I thought it would be a lot more sophisticated than like this this college student just kind of going around like making observations about society but I thought it was re a really good way to get into his head and connect with the main character like it's not often that you have that kind of narrator that has just such a strong personality and voice and the narrator really did in this one so I'm gonna put it as a tier four okay I've saved my favorite for last so this book is going to be a tier five and also it's my favorite MCU actor and show and character and everything so like it just all worked out perfectly Charlie Cox who plays Matt Murdock in the series Daredevil which is apparently going to be getting a reboot. I am so excited. I'm so thrilled. I just hope that they have good writers. I don't want Disney to just butcher it. Um, so I'm a little bit scared about that, but he said, at the, okay, I was searching everywhere for his favorite book. I could not find it. Like, I, I spent so much time on the internet because like I said, Matt Murdock is my favorite character and I really wanted his favorite book to be on this list. So anyway, I gave up. I just thought, okay, I can't find his favorite book anywhere. I happened to be watching a Daredevil panel just for fun. It was like, you know, like those 45 minute panels at Comic-Con. And at like the 45th minute in the last 20 seconds of the video, they were like going through questions really quickly to get as many in as possible. Someone happened to ask what his favorite piece of literature was. It was such a rushed question because they had so little time that only Charlie was able to answer and like the other two actors on the stage didn't even have time to answer. And he said it was The Razor's Edge by uh, William Somerset Mom. And I just like was like so ecstatic that I found it. <laughs> but I just absolutely loved the philosophical discourse in this book. It was so brilliant. It was like every single page I was rereading the quotes and thinking like, oh my gosh, this is just life changing. It had fantastic prose and you know, descriptions of like Paris and England and Chicago and everything. 
the characters were all flawed, but then they also had these qualities that just made you like hope that something good would happen to them. And you loved all the characters while being able to see their flaws. It was so expertly written. I would recommend this book to anyone. It's probably like my number one favorite novel now. The Razor's Edge, yeah, it was, it was a brilliant book and that's why I've saved it for last. It is going to be at the top of the tier five. It just the best of the best. So that's, I guess, just like a happy way to end this video. But yeah, that is part one of tier ranking all of the Marvel cast's favorite books. And for part two, once I read 18 books, so it'll be a while from now, but then I'll be able to include like Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, um, Florence Pugh, Brie Larson, John Bernthal, all sorts of others. So subscribe if you want to watch that when that comes out. But thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you don't disagree too much with my opinions. Um, I could be totally, like, you might think completely different things about these books than I did, but these were just my opinions and I had a lot of fun reading these. You know, even as much as I hated The Sun Also Rises, like, I'm glad that I read it. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.